Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, June 26th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the markets. Let's talk about who got caught being hot this week in the community. We'll talk about day trading and then we'll go through the alerts and all the current positions. So starting with the markets, you know, today, obviously another big red day in the market. Uh, I mean, this thing just you know, wasn't down too much at the open. In fact, in the overnight pre-market session, uh, we were up a little bit and then it was just, it was like a slow grind lower, right? I mean, didn't have any big flushes down. It just kind of kept grinding lower and lower and lower. Um, and then, you know, two days ago had a very similar size down day, had a little pause in between, but Man, I, I really think this thing is is gonna is gonna start falling. So be aware if you don't have short delta or if you don't have enough short delta in your portfolio. Uh, I think this thing is is, is ready to crack. I, I just I, I can't see this thing ripping to new highs. Obviously, it sure could. I am uh, I am. You guys probably think I'm a perpetual bear always, but that's that's really not the case. I just I really think this thing is too frothy. It's too it's too high for for where it needs to be. Now we've talked about over and over and over. The market is not the economy, right? The mark what the market is doing is not always related to exactly what's going on in the economy. So I don't want you to think it's just because of coronavirus spikes or unemployment or anything like that. I mean, I think this thing has just ripped too fast, too hard, too high. I think we are going to see some more downside. So that is what we are. That's the way we're playing it. We've got about two to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio when you beta weight it to spy. So we're certainly not overly short. Uh, in fact, I I would actually like to get a little bit more short if we get a if we get a bounce in the next week. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, this is the S and P. But we've t I've talked about in videos over the last couple of weeks that. What's really driving this market? It's really three main sectors. One is tech. So let's just look at the Nasdaq and let's go to a let's go to a yearly chart. So here's here's the Nasdaq. I mean, really heavily loaded with tech. Uh, the other thing is financials. So if you look at XLF, which is the financial ETF, you can see they these are not nearly as high. So they they rebounded, but not back to all time highs like tech has. And so. Uh, it, it's certainly pulling down on the market there, especially over the last couple weeks. And then the the last thing, and, and there's no real ETF I used to look at this, but the last thing is travel. And that's that's specifically with, um, you know, where we're at in the economy with the whole corona economy going on. Um, so if we just look at some of these um, travel stocks, like for example, Delta Airlines. I mean, th these things didn't get anywhere near back to all-time highs, right? And then, and they're seeing a pretty big slide the last couple weeks. Uh, so that's Delta Airlines. Expedia, another travel-related company, down over 6% today. Um, you know, again, not, nowhere, nowhere near the highs. And so still, still getting hammered there. Uh, but now... If you look at tech, I mean, look, Google's down over 5% today. Facebook down over 8% on the day. Some of these tech stocks getting hammered. I mean, Goldman Sachs, financial, getting hammered today. Uh, but I really think, so forget about forget about financials. I mean, they're they're a huge part of our economy. Uh, but, and then, and then travel. For this market to really, really go down, it's got to be led by tech. And, and the reason I say that is, and if you look at we, uh, if you look at our blog, we did a, a video called "Why Index Funds Are Dangerous," and it talked about. And this was, I think, a year and a half ago that I recorded that, and, and it was just talking about it's a cap weighted index, and because of all these tech companies becoming the, the largest companies in the world, your Microsoft, your uh, Amazon, your uh, Apple's. Um, and Google's, I mean, those are the, they make up such a huge heavy weight in the S, not only the NASDAQ, but the S&P 500. And so for the S&P to go down, for, for all the major indices to really go down, it's got to be led by tech. Now we're seeing, you know, today, uh, the NASDAQ down about a little less than two and a half percent, uh, small caps down leading leading a little bit more with uh, 269 the Dow actually down a little bit more than that the S&P so all all down pretty relative relatively the same 
uh, for this thing to really get hammered, tech is going to need to lead the way. And, and as you can see, it's still hovering near all-time highs. So had a little break two days ago and had a little break today. But, um, you know, like I said, for this thing to really get going to the downside, tech is going to be the leader. All right, so that's just a quick uh, summary on the markets. Let's go into the community and talk about who got caught being hot. So we're in the new community platform. If you haven't familiarized yourself with it yet, I know switching platforms can be difficult. Nobody likes change. Uh, I, I like some things about the old platform a little bit better, but I like a lot of things about this new one better too. And I think you will too, especially as we start to add some some really cool customization to it. Uh, but who got caught being hot this week? This week goes to our friend Atul. He's a, he's a new member to the community. Uh, and he didn't post this in the... Um, in the community, he sent it to me by email, but just some, as he was onboarding, and, and of course, we were going through this transition of the platform this week, and so it was a little little bit different, but, you know, he, he, he just provided some really good insight, some suggestions for how, you know, what what would be good as new members come on board, some kind of onboarding processes, very detailed email, so we take this stuff so seriously. I, I always ask you guys, you know, give me feedback. What do you like about this? What do you not like about this? We want to hear your suggestions, and and what a great, you know, just uh, summary that he sent us by email. And I'll be sharing some of those things as we as we roll different things out over the next weeks and months. But we're really, I mean, our top priority is literally to make this the best options trading community in the world. And that starts with suggestions and feedback from you all. So keep them coming. We love it. Uh, love everything that you guys are, are doing and, and, and saying and, and helping with. So keep it coming. Uh, Atul, congrats. You got caught being hot. All right, so one other thing I want to mention about the new community. We just posted on the blog, and we just posted in our community here. A, if you haven't seen it, uh, if you go to if you go to the topic, welcome to the Trade Hacker community. Uh, if you go to the, the very top here, you'll see we, we posted a link to a quick overview of the community. So if you haven't looked at that yet, make sure you do. It's also posted on our blog. And it'll give you a little bit better insight about how to navigate through this. One thing I also wanted to mention right now, everybody's username is basically just the first part of their email, right? Without right before the at gmail.com or whatever, right before the at symbol. And so that's kind of the default of what it what it gives you as a username. You can change that. And that was we just updated that. So if you go to your profile in the upper right hand corner, click on yourself and go to preferences and then go to uh, well, right here on account, you can just simply click this and you can change your username to whatever you want. So I know there's some people who uh, were looking for this where, you know, they had a different username in the in the old community platform. And now this one defaulted them to their their first part of their email. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to decide who, who was who and, you know, wh which people are commenting. So feel free to change that to whatever you want so we can get to know you and your comments and and everything else. And so hopefully that's helpful. Um, and I go over some of the other features of the of the community um, in the in that video, so be sure to watch that. All right, so moving on to let's go to day trading before we jump into the alerts. So bring this up here. So this week was not a great week of day trading for the kids, uh, and this was a lot. A lot of this had to do with user error, and, and so let's go through that. So from this week. Uh, June 22nd through June 26th, uh, down over $4,000. On the 22nd, uh, this day we lost $671. Um, traded pretty good, um, but you know sometimes the uh, sometimes the bad guys just win, and so that's a very manageable loss. Now this day is not a manageable loss, and what happened here is. Amazon got me. So a couple things worked against me. This is the day that I decided to increase my position size. So, you know, there's it's, it, that wasn't a mistake, but it just so happened that I that I increased my position size this day. But the main factor was Amazon and me trying to chase it. I made a big mistake again and tried to trade past 10 a.m., and try to get back some of the losses. Literally, this this day should have been about a a thousand dollar loser. Still, still would have been a losing day, but we're talking about a four thousand dollar difference. And so, 
again, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this before. I mean, this is it, it's a very mental game this this day trading and and so and and what I've found is you know if I'm up on the day which I was up on this day earlier and then I start going down I I have a very heavy tendency to want to chase and try to get that money back and so that's just that's just kind of getting to know my own uh, own emotions and this is the third time this has happened now where it's where it's caused a, a big loss and you know I every time Every time after it's happened, I've I've said that's not going to happen again, and and now it did again, and so uh, it's got to be it's got to it's almost got to be something where I absolutely just shut off my platform. Uh, you know, I'm trading in Tastyworks, so I could just literally just shut off my platform because I've I've got to mitigate those losses. If this is going to be successful for me specifically, for you, uh, and I'm I'm sharing this with you to make you better once we roll this day trading program out. Uh, because the opportunities are there every day. The strategy is awesome, but these, these mental mistakes and, and little things like this can create situations where, um, you know, not only did I trade past when I was supposed to, but I, I got even bigger size than I, than I should have, than I, that I wanted to. And, and it created this situation. So, not good for me, but hopefully this is going to be helping you once we roll this out because I'll be I'll be harping on this. And again, you know, I, I I don't think this would have happened had I been actually streaming live and 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 doing this with you all. So hopefully, you guys will be a great accountability for me. Next day was a was a great day, so I got back a lot of that plus uh, thirty five hundred. The only tiny loser was Microsoft. Everything else, uh, very solid returns on that day, and and. You know, I mean, it's that's kind of common. Like after I have a day where I just completely, you know, go off the rails, the next day is typically pretty good because I'm just doing it by the book. And this is a this is a more uh, I, I don't want to say normal, but this was you know the, uh, this was a very good day. Uh, but I also was very disciplined in my in my trade taking. Uh, next day, booked a small profit of two seventy two. Now I don't want to get into the hindsight shoulda coulda woulda but I did have I wasn't in my normal battle station in my office uh, I was trading uh, outside of my office and ended up having some internet issues where they went out and then I was looking at my charts on the desktop and executing from my laptop and I missed out on on some of the best part of the morning early in the early in the day and and so I probably left a couple thousand dollars uh, on the table by not getting those but again shoulda coulda woulda it is what it is. P and L is the only truth when it comes to this. So booked a booked a booked a positive profit, but but certainly not uh, not what I wanted. Then the next day, which is today, uh, this day was actually traded pretty decent. Um, and then uh, yeah, I mean this is this is a day where uh, this is kind of the risk of this style of trading. And I know I'm not giving you much insight because you guys haven't seen how we trade this yet, but based on the price action today, this was just a very tough day, you know, and I, and I used my increased size. So had I been on my, you know, previous size, this maybe it would have been $1,200 or $1,500, but it is what it is. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to back down because that, that was my, that that's my plan is to continue to increase size as the account grows and as I as I continue to scale this up. So it just so happens, you know, the week that I did this, we had a couple of really couple of bad days that, that went against me, but uh, it is what it is, you know, still still an excellent, excellent um, strategy. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet here. Um, so this is kind of where we stand now. This was this is this week here. So three red days, two green days. Again, that should have been a much bigger green day, and that should have been a much smaller red day. But I'm sure I, I, I want to show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly because this is more about a mindset game than it is about the strategy. You've got to you've got to you've got to master your your emotions when it comes to fear and greed in this strategy. And so that's 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 why I'm showing you this. Uh, let's see if there's any notes here that I didn't. Um, yeah. Okay. So I mentioned all those. So I just want to make sure. So anyway, that's the recap of the day trading. Let's move on to the trade alerts for this week. And start with 
So we're going to start with Monday, which was the 22nd. So let's go to that trade. First trade of the week was an opening trade in SPX. So we added a weekly calendar spread in SPX. This one had four days to expiration. So we put it on a Monday. Last day of trading was today on Friday. So we put that on. I'll get to the close of that here in just a minute. Uh, QQQ. So we added a new bunker trade in the QQQ. So let's go to the platform and take a look at the Qs. So here is our bunker. So price kind of went down, went up. It, we're up a little bit on this trade, a little bit less than $100. But again, we've got little, little risk to the upside, but a big potential for downside, which is exactly what we want in this, uh, in this market environment. We've also got two different short call verticals on. Uh, this one, we're up a couple hundred dollars on, waiting for a little bit more downside before we do anything there. That's in July. This one is also in July. And this one is just inside the range. So again, holding this for the, some of that short delta exposure. Next trade, closing trade in SPY. So we had a bunker on in SPY, got down to 60 days to expiration. So we went ahead and just closed that trade out. And that's when I opened the QQQ. Um, uh, right before that, just to kind of keep that that short delta, we just, um, you know, this one we got down to 60 days to expiration. We put this one on with um, 116 days to expiration. So we just extended duration, used a different symbol uh, to keep some of that short delta exposure in our portfolio. Next trade, XBI, we did a rolling adjusting trade. This is a uh, a an adjusted strangle. And so this was a, this was one that we uh, actually got assigned on. So we had two contracts. It, it looks a little bit jumbled. So there's, you'll see in the toss strings, there's three of them here. So we bought back um, the the July puts, two of those. We bought back one call because we only had one left and we bought back, um, oh, that's, 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 I need to correct that. That's actually in there twice. And then we sold the, the straddle. Okay, so we, we got assigned uh, on just one of our short calls. And so we still had one left. And so that's what, that's what I'm showing this. We bought back the puts, bought back the remaining call and bought back the stock. And then, um, and then we sold the, sold the straddle in the next one. So we basically just got to sign on part of it, rolled it out to the next cycle. And so that was a little bit of a confusing one, but now we're, uh, we're at, now we're out at 60 days with a short straddle. So let's take a look at XBI. Uh, you can see price had moved up and then moved back down the last couple days. And so we're we're uh, pretty well in range here, just waiting for some more time to pass and some more theta to decay. Rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So one of our short call verticals in DIA, we rolled from July with 24 days, rolled that out to August with 59. Um, uh, with this one, price had run higher at that point. Now, obviously, after the last couple of days, we wish we held it on, held on to it before we rolled, but still got the benefit after the roll, just didn't get back as much. Uh, so let's go to DIA and take a look at those. We've got two sets of short call verticals. So here's that one. Uh, this one's with three contracts. You can see prices moved down since then, made, made up about $260 since that roll. And then this one here. Uh, we've made up another ninety, almost a hundred dollars since we since we did that roll. These are both in August, so we got plenty of time. And just again, holding those for that short delta exposure. Next trade, Apple, another short delta play. This is a long put vertical, and rolled this. We had twenty four days to expiration. Rolled it out to uh, to fifty nine days to expiration in in uh, August. And same thing, that price was kind of way out of range. So we just rolled this to get back to a positive theta, keep that short delta in our portfolio. So if we take a look at that, you know, now we've made back about 300, a little over $300 since we did that roll. So just holding this for a little bit more, more downside action and we'll continue to do so. And, you know, we've taken some heat on this, on this Apple trade, right? We've, we've rolled it as it was going up. Uh, and now, you know, I mean, I, but I still, I really like having this and I've liked having it, even though it hasn't worked out for us over the last couple of cycles, because it is a tech stock, right? I mean, and, and I think if this market's really going to go down, it's going to be tech that's going to lead the way. And so I like having some exposure to a tech stock like Apple uh, with a long put vertical in this case. 
Next trade, opening trade in SPY. So we added another ducky duck, another iron duck in SPY. So if we take a look at SPY, we've got a couple different trades on here. So let's go down the line, starting with this iron duck. Uh, and this is the one that we had on previously. So you can see price is right here in the duck head. So if it kind of stays around this area for another few days, hopefully we can book a duck head. We've got a max profit of 645 on that one. The alert that I just mentioned is this duck here. And you can see price is just starting to enter the, the duck head area. And so we'll see what happens. We've got until July 9th on that one. The other piece, the other position that we have in SPY is this iron condor. And you can see price is dead centered. We're up about 153 bucks on this piece. Just waiting for some more time to pass on that before we do anything with our iron condor. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So this is one of our long put verticals in IWM. In this case, with the price moving lower, we are over 50% of max profit. So we just wanted to roll our strikes closer to price. In this case, roll that to August with 58 days to expiration. So we've got a couple pieces in IWM, starting with two long put verticals. So let's look at those first. So we've got this one in July. Now this one, I was thinking about rolling as well, but I, but I decided just to kind of let it go over the weekend. If we do get a little bit of a bounce back, we'll still roll it. And obviously if it, if it continues lower, we wake up Monday and it's continued lower, uh, we'll make profit uh, that way as well. And then we'll roll it with by rolling our strikes closer to the current price. And this is in July, so we will roll it out to August. Uh, this is the one we were just talking about though with three contracts. And so it's pretty close to where we where we rolled it. We're up 25 bucks since the roll. Just waiting for some more downside on that. And then we've also got a bunker, a couple bunkers. Uh, one is, let's see, it's this one and this one. Now this is a, a little bit different uh, duration than, than like we teach in the course. I did this because I was anticipating a pretty... Uh, short term, kind of a quick move lower. So I did this with with just out to August, and I just did this a couple weeks ago. So we're not going to hold this. We're already you know getting to the point where we're past sixty days to expiration. Uh, so as I, I mentioned in the comments, you know we're we're only going to hold this to July nineteenth, so thirty days before expiration at the very latest. I'd like to get this off next week. I mean, if we get a swift move down next week and we just get out for a little bit of profit. I'll, I'll get out of this and I'll probably put on another longer duration bunker. And then we also have on a longer duration bump bunker. This one is in September. Uh, so same kind of thing. We'll take this off by July 19th, which would be 60 days before expiration. We're up 447 on this. Uh, also, you know, we're, we're getting, you know, we've gotten some good down movement on this since we put it on. I mean, if we get kind of my target, I would say, if we get down to about the 130 level, uh, I would I would think about taking this off. Um, so let's look at where we're at on the chart. So if so, we're right here at about 135 ish. Yeah, if we get down to about 130, uh, we'll look at we'll look at taking this off. Oh, right here. Why is that shaded? There we go. Uh, yeah, we're at, we're at about the 136 level. So if we get down to about the 130, if we break these recent lows, um, that's when I'll look to take that off. And, and again, we'll be adding on another one with longer duration, but for that one specifically, take that off, book a profit, and put on another one with longer duration. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is a long put vertical. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece as well. So we just rolled our strikes closer, rolled this from 22 days out to 57. So let's take a look at our ES positions. We've got two different sets of long put verticals. Uh, here is this one, pretty, pretty close to where we rolled it as we just did that. And then here's the other one where we're up about 240. So again, just holding this for some more downside, downside delta. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So this was on Thursday, yesterday. This was one of our weekly double calendars. So we had two of these on. And what we've, what we've really been liking to do is close, if we have two of them on, close one on Thursday with one day to expiration, close the other one on Friday. And that worked out really well here. Booked about $175 on this one. And, and so then we were just, we had the remaining uh, weekly double calendar that we held until Friday. 
Now, before I get to that one, on that same day, Thursday, we added another one in the next cycle. And so if we take a look at that, we did this with, uh, had seven days in the front week and 12 days in the back week. So here's what that looks like. See, price has moved down since we put it on, but still well within range. Um, and, and these things have just been been really good, really profitable. So we'll keep doing these. And we did post a an update in our uh, weekly income course on the strategy. So, you know, in the course, uh, we, you know, we talked about using the 40 delta, using the seven day in the front week, 21 day in the back week. And we've modified that a, a little bit with this high implied volatility to where we're using shorter duration between the front and back. I mean, this is only four days between the front and back instead of 21 day instead of 14 days. And so that's that's one thing, and, and we've widened out our strikes because we can do so because of the uh, heightened and elevated implied volatility. So I did a an updated video kind of talking about that that uh, alternative setup methodology and why we do it. And so uh, if you're if you're wondering about that, that is in the course, the weekly income course, when we talk about the weekly double calendar strategy. So feel free to check that out. Next trade was the closing trade. Okay, so this was our closing weekly double calendar today on Friday. We booked, what did we book? 500 and some dollars. If you get a closed trades. Uh, yeah, 555. So 555 on that one and 175 on the other one that we booked Thursday. So good trades there. And then lastly, SMH did a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we had a short strangle. Got down to 21 days to expiration, so we went ahead and rolled that out to 56 days to expiration. Now, there, we were in the 121, 135. There was no 121 strike, so we just moved it to 120 and then kept the kept the, uh, the put at uh, 135. So we're inverted here. So if we take a look at that, XBI. That's not what I want. SMH, sorry. Thought that looked a little funky. Uh, so here we are, prices right here. So we do need some downside. So this is providing a little bit of short delta in our portfolio as well. And so uh, got a nice big range to move around in, assuming it's gonna move to the downside. And so that's where we're at on SMH and we're out in August. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. Gold, we've got an iron condor in gold. Price is hanging out right here, well within range. We're up a little bit, just waiting for some more profit before we do anything there. Natty Gas. Natty Gas has been on a little bit of a mini slide, especially yesterday. Big down day in Nat Gas, which brought us to uh, prices hanging out over here near near the break even of our profit tent. Now that doesn't really mean anything after we have um, after we've adjusted. But if we look at just the untested side, the call side, you know, there's there's a little bit of premium left in here. But if price continues lower, we will go ahead and roll those calls down. Uh, we've got a decent amount of time here. We've still got 32 days to expiration, uh, so we will, um, you know, we'll probably if we if we were to if price continues lower on Monday, uh, we'll, at that point we'll still probably roll out to the next cycle. Let's see how many days are in Natty Gas in the next cycle. If we go back to the trade tab, so we've got 32 in the one that we're in. But the next one's got 61. Yeah, so we'll be under 60 days to expiration in the next cycle. So if we have to roll down those calls next week, we'll roll down the calls and we'll roll out to the 60, well, what is now currently 61 days to expiration. Bonds. Let's take a look at bonds. So we've got this adjusted strangle here in bonds. Uh, price is hanging out here in the upper end of the range. It was pretty fairly centered, and I was going to give it another day or two and potentially roll that and, and kind of lock in that that credit that we were at. But then price kind of shot higher with stocks going down, bonds moved higher. You see, you know, moved higher that day, paused when the when stocks moved a little bit up, and then has moved higher again here too. So if we get a little bit of a rollover in bonds, uh, that'll bode well for for this position, and we'll look to potentially roll this. Um, now we've got 28 days. So at the end of next week, we'll be getting closer to that 21 days expiration. But if we get to a position where we're at 40 and especially 50% of max profit here, then we'll definitely lock that in and roll out to the next cycle. I mentioned Apple uh, DE, John Deere. We've got a short call vertical here. 
Price is hanging out right here. We're up about 140 some dollars since we did that roll. So just holding that for some short delta. I mentioned DIA. I mentioned IWM, QQQ. I think that's it. XLK, our, our last short delta position. Price is right inside range here. This is still in July. So if we get a quick move lower, we will roll that out to August. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Talk to you next week.